In this video, we solve homework problem 7.3.012 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions textbook. Um, it's the seventh edition. The problem statement says, use the shell method to write and evaluate the definite integral that represents the volume of the solid generated by revolving the plane region about the y-axis. And this picture actually wasn't given to us. We were given these boundaries for our region. So first we have y equals x to the 3 halves. Um, one thing I want to point out to you is that if this exponent is larger than 1, um, you're going to see something that looks kind of like y equals x squared. If the exponent is some number between 0 and 1, like x to the 1 half, like if that was a 1 half, then you're going to see something that goes this way. So if this exponent's larger than one, we're gonna see something that looks like this. It looks like y equals x squared, or in other words, it's concave up. If that number is between zero and one, it's gonna be concave down. And if x equals one, um, then it's completely straight. Um, or if, if the exponent equals one, it's completely straight, and it's just the line y equals x. Um, so even if I don't have a graphing calculator, that exponent is an indicator of what that curve looks like. So we wanna sketch that curve that looks like this. Um, and we also want to sketch the curve y equals 8. y equals 8 looks like this. And then y or x equals 0. Remember, that's the same as the y-axis. That's that right there. So when I put these three pieces together, y is equal to this, x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 8, those three form the bounds of my region. So this is the region that we're starting with. And then we're taking this region and we're revolving it around the y-axis. Because it says that right here. So we want to imagine taking that and reflecting it over here. Um, so what I would recommend that you do and with any of these problems, shell method or um, disc or washer method, is first you start by sketching the region. And of course, the axis of revolution. And next, I want you to sketch the reflection of that region around this axis. So you have to imagine that you're spinning this around and you have to sort of picture in your mind's eye what that, what that solid would look like. Um, if I take this and I revolve it about this axis, I'm going to see a reflection over here. And so this would be the reflection of that region. And then once I've done that, I'd like to sketch a typical piece. Um, in this case, we're asked to use this shell method. So I want to sketch a, um, a representative, excuse me, um, cylindrical shell. Now remember, whenever you use the shell method, you are going to slice parallel to that axis of revolution. So this is vertical, so I'm going to draw a vertical rectangle over here. And then I want to imagine taking that rectangle and revolving it about this axis. Um, by, because of the revolution, it's going to be completely symmetric. This rectangle over here will appear over here when I do the, that revolution. And so here is my representative cylindrical shell. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to give you the right idea of what your shell looks like. 
So we slice the region um, parallel to the axis. Um, and then we sketch a typical shell. And that shell is going to help us find the, um, all the pieces that we need for our volume integral. Okay, so imagine you've got all of these shells nested within shells. You've got some other shells down here and then another one that's a little bit smaller. It's gonna be wider, but like shorter, the height is shorter. And then it's, there's gonna be another one that's wider and shorter. You wanna think of these like Russian nesting dolls. Um, you've got one shell nested inside of another shell nested inside of another shell. Um, and if I can find the volume of one of those shells, then I can find the volume of the whole thing. So there's my typical shell. It's not a great picture, but that's okay. Um, basically what you want to do is imagine this like the outside of a can of beans. Like if you were to go to the grocery store and buy a can of green beans, um, you'd have like a seam on the side of that can. We want to cut along that seam and we want to unfold it. Now, whenever I say it's like a can of beans, what we're looking for is not the volume inside the can. We're looking for the volume of you know, whatever material that is that's making up that can. And we're only talking about the volume of that piece on the outside, not the top and not the bottom. So um, if I want the, to find the volume of this shell all the way on the outside of that can of beans, I would cut it down one side and then unfold it. And then this, that's the height of my shell. Uh, denote that by h sub i. That becomes the height of this rectangular slab. We know how to find the volume of that. Um, the thickness of that shell is always the same as the width of that representative rectangle. Since that representative rectangle has a width that's a little distance in the x direction, it's a little horizontal distance, that's going to be delta x. That means that dimension there is delta x. And then this dimension comes from going all the way around up here. That's just the circumference of that circle. And we know that the circumference of a circle is two pi times the radius of the circle. So the volume of one shell is two pi times the radius of the shell times the height of the shell times the thickness of the shell, which is delta x. So now we just need to find the radius and the height in terms of x. And so we go up here to our picture and we can label our picture and look at our picture to figure out what the radius and the height um, have to be. Okay, so let's do the radius first. You always start at the axis and you wanna go out to that representative rectangle. Always go out to the representative rectangle in the original region, not the reflected region. So I go out to here. I notice that that is a horizontal distance. So I want x on the right minus x on the left in terms of x. And the x value on the right over here is just a general x value. And x on the left, let's well x on the y axis, that's x equals zero. And that was actually one of our bounds. So the radius turns out to just be x. Now the height requires a little bit more work. It's a vertical distance. So anytime you're working with vertical distances, you wanna do the top y value minus the bottom y value. But notice that this integral is going to be in terms of x. So I need the top y value and the bottom y value in terms of x. So keep that in mind. That means I want y as a function of x here, and y is a function of x here. The top y value, well, it looks like no matter what shell we're on, that top y value is going to be y equals eight. And the bottom y value is given by y along this curve. And along this curve, y in terms of x is x to the 2 thirds. Did I say 2 thirds? I wrote two thirds, but that's actually supposed to be three halves, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's three halves over here and somehow I wrote two thirds over there. 
Let's scribble that out. It's nice to use whiteout or an eraser. And if you are, um, if you don't have access to those, you can always just scribble it out. And that's a good indicator for what you need to study anytime you make mistakes like that. Um, that was just a transcription error, but um, you get the idea. Um, and this is an X value on the ith or in the ith um, subdivision in the X direction. So this is in the ith cylindrical shell. So we should put little eyes on these. Okay. So we sketched a typical shell. And then we um, are now doing this part. We want to find V sub I, the volume of the ith shell. And we just did. Well, we've got all the pieces anyway. Um, so volume is 2 pi times the radius times the height times delta x. And the radius happened to be x of i, and the height was 8 minus x sub i to the 3 halves. If I want the total volume, it's approximately the sum of all of those volumes, the volume of each cylindrical shell. Imagine you've got n of them, we add them together. The exact volume comes from taking the limit as the number of cylindrical shells goes to infinity, or alternatively, you can say that delta x goes to zero. Of this sum, and this sum is represented um, more succinctly as the sum as i goes from 1 to n of the v sub i, or the sum as i goes from 1 to n of v sub i, which is this. So it's 2 pi times x sub i times 8 minus x sub i to the 3 halves times delta x. And if we take the limit of this as n goes to infinity, so you imagine you have infinitely many shells, or if you prefer, you can do let delta x go to zero. So infinitely thin cylindrical shells, that's an integral. So we'll have 2 pi times x times 8 minus x to the 3 halves. Delta x becomes dx in the limit, and the limits of integration have to be x values because we're integrating with respect to x. So we need to figure out where x starts and where x stops. Well, it's pretty obvious that x starts at zero. x stops over here. Question is, what is that x value? Well, to figure that out, I can just set the y value on this curve equal to the y value on this curve because they have the same y value at that point. And then I can find the corresponding x value that makes that true. So you want to set this y equal to this y and solve for x. So I have x to the 3 halves equals 8. So let's raise both sides to the 2 thirds. And remember, the reason for that is if you have x to a power raised to a power, you just multiply the exponents. I want that exponent to be 1 when I'm done. So whatever that fraction is, I want to raise it um, this side to the reciprocal power. So that when I multiply those together, I get 1. Um, so we have x equals um, 8 to the 2 thirds, which can be written a couple of different ways. I would recommend doing the root first. So we'll take the cube root of 8 and then square it. That's one way that this um, number to the 2 thirds power can be written. It's the cube root of that number squared. That goes there and that goes there. Um, and the cube root of 8 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. So that's x equals 4. And that means we're integrating from 0 to 4. Okay, so let's, let's recap what we just did and then we'll evaluate the integral. Um, we found the volume of the ith shell. And then I'm going to say add them. So that means the sum or the total volume is the sum as i goes from 1 to n of the v sub i. 
let's say compute or state the limit uh, to derive the appropriate integral. So we've got a special case of a Riemann sum right here. And that special case of a Riemann sum is equal to this integral. Um, and then we had to find the appropriate limits of integration. And the way we did that was by setting the y values equal to each other and solving for x. Solve for x. And again, we do that because the y's have to be equal at that point where the curves intersect. Okay, so we're here. Now we just need to evaluate this integral. Do that on the next page. Got all this paper that I'm recycling. Or I guess it's not really recycling yet. I'm just reusing it. I use so much paper. I feel like I can try to do a little something for the planet. It's not much, but do what I can. If you want, you can factor out the 2 pi, or you can distribute the 2 pi in. I think I will factor it out. So I've got my 2 pi out there, and I'll distribute that x through here of 8 times x minus x to the 3 halves times x to the first. Remember, we add the exponents. 1 plus 3 halves is 5 halves. If you're not sure, you can think of that as 2 halves. 2 halves plus 3 halves is 5 halves. And then we integrate. Bring the 2 pi down. Bring the 8 down. And then for this one, we're going to use the power rule. So you want to add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Over here, we want to use the power rule as well. Add 1 to the exponent. 5 halves plus 1, which is 2 over 2, 5 halves plus 2 over 2 is 7 halves. Divide by the new exponent. Dividing by 7 halves is multiplying by 2 sevenths. And then you want to evaluate from 0 to 4. Of course, uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we've got 2 pi times 4x squared minus 2 over 7 times x to the 7 halves evaluated from 0 to 4. At 4, we get this. And then at 0, if x is 0, I get 0 here and 0 here. 0 minus 0 is clearly 0. OK, so that's our answer. We've got 2 pi times 64 minus uh, 2 over 7 times this. And if you want, you can do the arithmetic, but you don't have to. Just take that as the square root of 4 and then raise it to the 7th. Um, so you've got 2 to the 7th there. And I'm not going to waste your time by doing any more arithmetic here in calculus, our calculus video. So I've got 64 minus uh, 2 divided by 7 times 2 to the 7th. That was in parentheses. We're going to take that. We're going to multiply by 2. And then, of course, multiply by pi. Now, we don't actually want to distribute the pi in. We don't want to use a numerical approximation. We want the exact answer. So that's it. And if you're saying to yourself, what is that again? Um, that's the volume of this guy. It looks like kind of like a bowl shape, I would imagine. If I take this and I revolve it around this axis, I'm going to see this. Um, imagine that that's in 3D. And we just found the volume of that bowl shape. It's this much. If you want a numerical approximation, of course, you could use your calculator to get that. It's going to be that many units cubed.